everybody, John Neal here. Can I show you how I did this watercolour painting? Okay, let's go. I'm a travelling spirit, I've seen many shores from the west. Well, this is a pencil sketch which is horribly out of focus, so I don't know what's gone wrong here. But uh, don't worry, it's only a couple of uh, seconds long. Um, pencil to start with, just to get the lines more or less right. I did work from a photograph and now I'm just using a pen and ink to finish this off. And you'll notice I've got quite a, a nice wall effect going. That wasn't in the photograph. It's nice to have some line into the picture to make it work well. So that's the pen and ink done. Now let's move on to the watercolour. All I'm doing here is virtually wetting the paper. And if you put a little bit of colour in it, you can see exactly where you're going. So turning the paper sideways, as I've done, and then just wetting the whole of the sky area. And once this has been done, I can then drop some colour in. And I'm going to put the colour very close to the chimney in the middle, just to have a sort of a focus effect up to that point. Right, that's all the skyline done. Let's just put a bit more water over all the rest of it. Now this is the, the fun bit. It's getting some really deep colour and just dropping it in while everything's wet. So you have to move fairly quickly to make sure the paint runs into wet paper and it hasn't dried out. Very, very carefully just come up to the edge there. Now this will dry slightly lighter than what you see here. And I'm just helping the edges along there with some water. Okay, so far so good. I think the next thing possibly is to put a little bit more deep colour in there. And once you've uh, put the water in to start with, then the paint will run into those places where the water is. So you don't need to be quite so careful, just drop the colour in and get that nice deep blue. Another thing I must mention is that this background I in invented, it wasn't quite the same as this, but it was uh, good to just break the horizon line with the two chimneys. Uh, it helps break up the, the, the composition of the picture. Okay, all I'm doing now is much the same sort of thing again, but with some very, very pale, greeny sort of colour, nice and wet. And this will be mostly the distance. And you'll notice, of course, you cannot do this unless that blue is dry. So I've used the hairdryer, which is always by my side, to dry off the paint before I move on to the next stage. Otherwise, it will run into the blue, which you should, don't want at this point. All right, same sort of technique here. Put a little bit more colour and depth of colour in there and hopefully leave the hill at the back on the right, where it is. I'm putting some tissue paper to the side there. It's always useful to have that by your side, just to dab the brush in if it's too wet, or you want to get some paint off the brush. As a rule of thumb, you can make the colours become brighter and more bold the closer you come towards the foreground. That no one else can carry this load. It's a train where I'm the only passenger on board. Oh, there is beauty to enjoy on this road. But even so, I still feel that I'm alone. Well, that is actually a wall there, so. I won't paint the green behind it. Leave me stranded, I know how to handle it all on my own. 
I had to work on the the stonework on this uh, building. This is going to be the lightest side, so the light is actually coming from this direction, from the right to the left. So this is a, a very light covering, just to give a first background, and then on top of this I'll put some uh, other brick marks and uh, and some darker areas where the shade will be as well. Just trying to make sure I can catch some white on the top of those bricks. They're stones, not bricks, what am I saying? Right, go back to this and make sure you've still got it nice and wet. Otherwise, if you leave it to dry, it's very difficult to join up this with the colours. Leave me stranded, I know how to handle it all on my own. On my own. Okay, back to normal speed. Um, having got those faces done, then you'll notice I've missed out the chimney pots, which will be a different colour, and the rooftops, the slate will be a different colour, and the grass and the bushes at the front. Right, now just a point of, uh, I like doing this, a little bit of extra colour on what might be ceramic earthenware, sort of pots at the top. Paint to one side, and then a little bit of water, allow it to run across. Let's put a little bit more on top of that one chimney as well. Right, back to normal speed again. This time I'm going to look at the windows. Now windows are interesting because it can be quite complicated because basically they are holes into the building. Sometimes light comes out of them if it's a dark exterior. But in this case they are in daylight and of course they've invariably got glass on the front so they're not only holes into the building but they've also got glass on the hole. So that will reflect, no doubt, the colour of the sky. So here, let's get in a bit closer. You can see I'll put a bit of blue on the top and then just touch it with some wet, wet a wet brush and allow the colours to run down. So you've got a variation of, of blue. And I think that gives some impression of a window. Just add a little bit more there of effect. And of course, once it's all dry, I might put some more ink on and put an extra line of dark on the underneath the edge and to one side of the window. Now I'm going to start creating some of the stone effect on the end of this wall. One or two little dashes of colour with a very light grey sort of colour and then later on I will put some ink marks around this to help pick out the shapes of the stones but it helps create a texture on this end wall and I'll add to this in a moment and change colour make it darker or even change the hue altogether. Now, miraculously, I'll put the shadow in. Um, 
sorry I can't show you that, missed the filming of it. But as you can see, just a, a plenty of a dark blue black colour and then fill in the shapes where the shadows are. And the shadows are very useful because they they follow the shapes that they go over so that it helps define the form of grasses and curbstones and so on. And very useful, I think, for just going straight over some of the faces there and creating an interest in light and dark. And as I said before, oh, there we go, missed that bit. So that's just another bit of shadow going in there. And I always like to cut them across one of the faces as well. And here I'm just putting an extra little bit of shadow underneath the uh, the eaves and the end of the roofs and the chimney as well. While I've got it, just add a little bit more of another darker shade to this wall. Right, and now as promised, um, get the pen out again. This looks like it's a 0.5 of a mil pen. Lovely pens, these. Um, they, have a lot. they are made by um, Unipin, fine line. Yeah, good pen. Um, and here I'm marking each of these shapes that I mark with a brush to make these uh, stones appear in the texture of the end wall. And by and large, all right, I'm going all the way around there, but by and large, you would mark the underside and one of the sides which is away from the light. And likewise with the window here, do the underside of the frame and the dark side to the right, because the light is coming from the right, it would make those dark there and dark there. realized those stones on the end wall there I'm marking the right hand side not the left so that's a mistake really if I was doing it again I'd do it differently but some of them as you can see I'm just going all the way around anyway so dark side of these posts as well Well, that's it. That's as much as I'm going to do. Uh, you'll notice just a few little bits and pieces. Don't overdo this. You can be a bit over enthusiastic at this point and put too much detail in. Um, I did put a significant uh, bit more paint on that window, the big window to the left of me there, and the door. You'll see in the final version in a moment. Otherwise, it's more or less as it is. Fairly pleased with that. Well, I hope that was uh, entertaining and possibly useful. Listen, I'm not the best watercolour artist on YouTube or in the world. It's just good fun. I enjoy doing it. Uh, I've picked up one or two tricks. If they're useful for you to see, all well and good. I enjoy doing it. That's the main thing. And uh, so if it's of use to you, thank you very much. Um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, you will see me again in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye. <music>